where the pavement ends and the natural world begins. There exists an unusual place where an ancient and powerful energy lives, the Devil's River, a realm overflowing with such spectacular beauty. Most can only define it as magic, enchanting to behold, dangerous to experience. Here, the wiles of civilization cannot follow. The habits of comfortable living do not apply. One must honor the spirit of the river. This noble force is the combined miracle of pure, undefiled wilderness. Welcome to the last untamed kingdom of the Southwest. A team of paddlers embark on a journey much the same as yours. Their trip will equip you with important knowledge. Those drawn to these waters must share a common purpose to treasure, preserve, and protect the Devil's River and Wild Texas. I'm like a fish out of water everywhere else, man. When I come back here, it's like getting thrown back in. <laughs> a trip down the Devil's River can be really challenging to plan, exhausting to navigate, and life-threatening to the unprepared. Chapter one. Planning and packing at Del Norte headquarters. So if we're planning to put in or take out from a state natural area, we gotta have a Devil's River access permit. It only costs 10 bucks, not including camping fees. Permits will be emailed to us along with a welcome map. Remember to print two copies of our permit along with the paddler's map. Prior to getting on the Devils, you're likely to get a river safety brief from a park police officer or a ranger. They'll know you're coming. They'll either brief you here at the Del Norte headquarters or at a predetermined drop-in point. There are two main routes to access the river from the top. The best is the Del Norte launch point located at the north unit of the state natural area. For direct access to state natural area riverfront put-in and takeout sites, a TPWD contracted guide or shuttle service is recommended and in some cases required. Search TPWDs preparing for a Devil's River trip for useful tips and important information on trip logistics. But we're going to be going from Baker's Crossing, which is the northernmost put-in that commits us to a much longer stretch of river. In the Marine Corps, we had a common saying, complacency kills. Whenever you're heading out into harsh yet beautiful territory, it's really easy to let the paradise aspect of it start to dominate your thought processes and you start to forget where you are. In order to avoid this pitfall, you want to make sure to approach the route or the situation at hand on its terms. TERM is an acronym that stands for Time, Energy, and Risk Management. It's a common phrase used by a lot of canyoneers and fellow adventurers whenever we're sizing up a route. And it certainly applies to this river. If you're out here running the devils, you definitely want to approach it on its terms. Okay, so here's the gear that we brought out for this trip. These are the essentials we're going to need for running the devil's river. Best items are compact, lightweight, and sturdy. Keep a checklist to ensure you've packed for protecting the river. Watercraft. Boat patch kit. PFDs, spare paddles, tie line. Containers. Glass and styrofoam are not allowed. Watertight dry bags and sealed bear cans, coolers, or ammo cans are approved storage methods. Sanitation. Waste alleviation and gelling bags, or WAG bags, are required for human waste disposal. Sealed containers for garbage and human waste must be used and secured to prevent contamination. All must be carried out of the river corridor and disposed of properly. Cargo rigging. Secure all cargo to withstand swamping and rollovers. Loose cargo equals littering, and it's your responsibility to retrieve anything that falls out. He's cool. Be cool. She's actually on the aquatic species list here on the Devil's River. No, I'm not. I've been a Valverde County game warden for six years. Once I found the river, I, I definitely found home. I want people to come out here and uh, respect the river the way that I do, and I'm really hoping that they they have their equipment, they have their gear they need, uh, they're able to remain safe. <laughs> I hope they have a great time. Hey, man, you get your permits? Actually, yes, I do. We put the one in the drop box all right. so y'all know we're on the river. And the other one is right here on my person for circumstances just like this. Outstanding, man. What if I forget about all the rules and I need to find you? How do I find you? Don't worry about it, man. I'll find you. Chapter 2, Camp Ethics. Humans can have a major impact on any environment that we tread, and that footprint can be very destructive to a pristine ecosystem like this one. So it's a huge part of our mission to inform you of hazards and arm you with all of the information that you would need to have a safe, low impact, and successful expedition. Let's begin with campfires. 
they aren't allowed along the Devil's River State Natural Area waterfront. Val Verde County is almost always under a burn ban. But hey, lack of a campfire doesn't mean you can't have a hot meal. We recommend containerized fuel camp stoves like these for cooking while paddle camping. Leave what you find, unless it's trash from other paddlers. Take pictures, not souvenirs, and resist the urge to leave a mark. Make it a priority to respect the wildlife. There are many amazing creatures out here that are best appreciated from afar. One great way to do that and keep your campsite safe is to use a bear can. They are wonderful for bringing your food in and packing your waste out. If we don't use a bear can, the food and garbage will attract the animals to your campsite and distort their natural instincts and alter their behavior patterns. Loud amplified music and voices echo off the canyon walls, can be heard downriver, and may disrupt the experience of others. Leave No Trace is all-encompassing out here. Food byproducts, charcoal waste, cigarette butts should all be packed out in appropriate containers. When it's time to go, use a wag bag. This is one of the key differences from the usual Leave No Trace code of ethics. Cat holes are just not adequate on the devils. Wag bags are required for human waste. And here's why. The accumulation of untreated sewage on the river is detrimental to the water quality. There are few things worse to find in nature than a wad of brown paper spread all over the trail or floating in the river. It's easy to think that your personal impact is going to be very small and hey, no one's really looking, who cares? Just assume that everybody else thinks that way and be the exception. When I come out here, I like to, you know, catch the things going wrong, but I also love seeing people fishing, doing the right thing, uh, picking up trash, camping in the right spots, you know, pull up to a campsite after some people left and uh, find it clean, find it better than, you know, better than I did the time before. We're actually getting pretty close now to one of the river's more iconic landmarks, Dolan Falls. Take out early above the falls and portage on river left. The river banks surrounding the falls are private property, so don't loiter there more than the time it takes to actively scout and portage the falls or you will be trespassing. Injury and loss of equipment are common when paddlers attempt to run Dolan Falls. Chapter 3, Angler's Note. There are many species on this ecologically diverse river. Because of this, be sure you're familiar with the regulations. This can be found on the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department website. The Devil's River is catch and release for smallmouth and largemouth bass. These regulations are in place to protect this unique fishery for future generations to enjoy. Follow these simple rules to protect your catch. Wet your hands before handling your fish. Their slime is crucial to maintaining their health. To avoid harm to the fish, you should always support the fish with both hands. You should never keep the fish out of the water longer than you can hold your breath. The trees, brush, and limestone can tangle you up. Be sure to recover any broken line or terminal tackle and pack it out as part of your leave no trace ethic. If you're caught keeping a smallmouth or a largemouth bass, you can be fined anywhere from $25 to $500 and also civil restitution, which is the value the state places on the fish. Howl at the moon if you feel like Chapter 4 riparian plant management. It's a river's job to drain the landscape. So it's important to leave everything as you find it. We need the vegetation. It's not sucking up water. It's contributing to the flow. There are plants there that uh, are performing the heavy lifting. They're holding the river banks together. It's best to understand the plants, which ones are which. The riparian area is just a tiny piece, about 1% of the whole landscape. And it's the area right along the edge of the river. But it's the river's last defense. So anytime you're putting a trail or a road, an access point, you have to be extremely considerate of the vegetation. It's not all created equal. When you have problems in the catchment, and you have disturbances on the land, which we have more and more disturbance on the land. We have more and more people in Texas. The last opportunity then for a river to stay healthy is its riparian area. Chapter five, public water versus private property. I see paddlers coming down the river almost every weekend. I have seen people trespass, and it is something that does happen. A lot of landowners have to deal with trespassers on a continual basis. Most people here in Blue Stage are relatively pretty friendly, um, and we'll help you out. Uh, luckily, the landowners are 
pretty forgiving, but don't take advantage of their kindness. As a landowner, would, if we see somebody trespassing or doing uh, something that's not legal, we will take photographs and we will document it and uh, supply it to the authorities and um, citations will be issued. If we can identify trespassing through photo or video evidence, you can expect to receive a citation in the mail. Whether I get you at the takeout or later by mail, you don't want to finish this river with a ticket. When it comes to finding a perfect campsite or breaking for lunch, follow these guidelines to stay in the game. All property along the Devil's River, except for Baker's Crossing Bridge, the units of the Devil's River State Natural Area and Lake Amistad National Recreation Area are privately owned. Approved campgrounds are marked with official signs from the Parks Department. Outside the TPWD sanctioned paddler camps, gradient boundary law makes it very difficult to find a campground that's legal. If you do find yourself in a situation or you're off schedule, your best bet is to use the riverbed or the islands. Just be aware that camping in these areas, while legal, can be extremely dangerous if the river rises. So choose carefully and have alternate locations in mind if you are returning to the river at different parts of the year. Chapter 6, Life and Death at Devil's Back. The threat of a life and death scenario began the moment that your shuttle vehicle drove away. This was your first exposure to real danger, especially if you didn't approach this river on its terms and made some of the more common mistakes such as inadequate research of the environment, insufficient packing, no emergency communications, no medical kit, poor physical fitness. I know these all seem like small manageable mistakes and hey, if everything goes fine, then it should be okay, right? Well, it's a pretty big if to take in an unforgiving place. Folks think it's the rattlesnake bite, flash floods, or other catastrophic events that generate most life-threatening circumstances. But more often, it's the subtle compounding incidents that sneak up on you and form a life-threatening event. Let's recap. Slipping, tripping, and exposure to the elements are all minor incidents that could easily produce an immobilizing injury. Any of these accidents, when paired with a common mistake, can put you in a grave position when trouble finds you. And suddenly, you find yourself praying for a miracle, a whistle, or a sap phone. This is God's country, but it's the Devil's River that cuts through it. And of course, all this information is purely hypothetical, because the only one who was most definitely in danger from the moment we entered these waters was the spirit of the river itself. The spirit of the river is most evident in ourselves. You can never come back from running the Devil's River, because the person you are put in will not be the same at takeout. You are now a steward of this great river, and together we treasure, preserve, and protect the Devil's River and Wild Texas. I love this place. Aren't allowed. Yeah, Ever! <laughs> uh, people that paddle down the rapids usually lose quite a bit of gear. This is an environment that's functioning at its greatest potential. Freedom! That was a good one. Did you get that one? What's here is what it was like originally hundreds and hundreds of years ago. I've got a four-year-old son right now. I'd like for him to have the same trip y'all are going to have today. So I certainly want y'all to have a good time as you go down. Take care of our river. I'll stand by you. Devil's back to Amistad. It's not a paddle trip. It's a hike with a boat. I've taken like 10,000 steps and about four paddle strokes. From here, the river gradually opens up and it becomes a lake. But all the same rules still apply. <clears throat> but you're gonna be looking at it, about 10 miles of really powerful headwinds, lots of portaging, tons of cane break mazes to navigate, and really long stretches of flat water paddles. I don't recommend it. Woo, that's the river back there. 
lake in front of us. Why did I do this? My perfect kingdom now. I heard me fierce. I mean, it's at least 10 miles. Y'all coming? Let's get y'all's boat loaded. I left the GoPro for you in the boat. Y'all coming? Are you serious? <laughs> All right. Hi. That's so bad. I'll stand by you.